What up, y'all? It's your boy, Mr. Downtown Ray Mel, and you're listening to the Entertainment Report on iHeartRadio, live from Dubai for Friday, December 9th, 2016, delivering some major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the Entertainment Report with Ray Mello, that's R-Y-M-E-L-O, on Twitter at the Enter Report, or on Instagram at the Entertainment Report. You can listen to the show anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com, or your iHeart phone app, search for the Entertainment Report and it'll take you to the page. The new version of the animated series DuckTales will premiere on Disney XD in 2017. The show's official Twitter account posted a 15 second clip Wednesday revealing the show's logo and confirming when it will debut. A message accompanying the video get ready for some do or do, bad and good luck tales. Woohoo! Hashtag DuckTales. The original cartoon aired from 1987 to 1990. Baywatch released the first teaser trailer starring Dwayne Johnson and Zac Efron on Thursday. The previous sees veteran lifeguard Mitch Buchanan, played by Johnson, team up with new recruit Matt Brody, played by Efron, a hard-partying Olympic swimmer, to help protect and serve beachgoers in Los Angeles County. Baywatch is based on the same television series of the same name, which ran from 1989 to 1990 on NBC and from 1991 to 2001 in syndication. The movie is directed by Seth Gordon, who directed Horrible Bosses, and co-stars Priyanka Chopra, Alexandra De Dario and Kelly Robach. Robach told E! News in June of revamping the franchise iconic red swimsuit. It was a process. We must have retailored it or reconstructed ten different times. We sort of played around with it. It took us almost a month to get it right. Uh, she also added original star Pamela Anderson has a cameo, so she came to the set and it was good fun. David Hasselhoff came as well. Anderson and Hasselhoff played C.J. Parker and Buchanan in the original series. The movie reboot also features Infinite Hadira, John Bass, Hannibal Burris and Yaha Abul Mateen the second. It opens in theaters May 26, 2017. The Good Fight, the eagerly awaited streaming spinoff of The Good Wife, is to premiere on CBS All Access February 19th. A special broadcast preview of its pilot will air on the CBS television network that same night, after which all fresh episodes will be available online weekly on Sundays, exclusively for CBS All Access subscribers. Starring Christine uh, Baranski, Kusho Jumbo, Rose Leslie, Delroy Lindo, Sarah Steele, Paul G- uh, Goyfifoyle, Bernadette Peters, Justin Baratha, and Erica Tazer, the legal drama drama begins one year after the events of the final broadcast episode of The Good Wife. Mark Bevervoice, the President and Chief Operating Officer at CBS Interactive, said in a statement Wednesday, CBS All Access has built tremendous momentum in the past year, passing 1 million subscribers, launching our first original with Big Bang, uh, Big Brother over the top, and most recently bringing live NFL and CBS programming to the service. We're continuing this momentum with the upcoming launch of The Good Fight, which promises not only to deliver more ambitious premium programming for our subscribers, but an opportunity for world-class creators like Robert and Michelle King to push the envelope in new ways. Amazon says its best-selling book of 2016 is Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, Parts 1 and 2, Special Rehearsal Edition script by J.K. Rowling, Jack Thorne, and John Tiffany. The play continues the story of Harry Potter, now an adult wizard and family man, who is the main character in seven blockbuster novels penned by Rowling. The stage screen of the drama is currently the hottest ticket in London and is headed to Broadway in 2018. Uh, Chris Sillip, the Amazon senior book editor, is said in a statement Wednesday, this year's best-selling list showcased the variety of Amazon readers' tastes, from literary fiction to thrillers to memoirs. The power of Potter is still strong, and readers of all ages can get enough of the Hogwarts. Harry Potter and the Cursed Child was the most anticipated book of the year, breaking pre-order records months before its release. Netflix has released a two-minute trailer for its contemporary reimagining of the sitcom One Day at a Time. Rita Moreno, Justina Machado, Stephen Tabalatsky, Todd Grinnell, Isabel Gomez, and Marcel Ruiz star in the reboot of the series. Set to premiere January 7th, the new version follows three generations of a Cuban-American family sometimes reluctantly cohabiting and navigating the ups and downs of a new life. Synopsis continues by, by reading a newly single mom and military veteran journeys through the triumphs and tribulations that comes with raising two strong-willed mega-millennial children, all the while enlisting the help of her old-school mother and her building manager turned invaluable confidant. The original series starred Bonnie Franklin, Valerie Bertinelli, Pat Harrington, and Mackenzie Phillips, and it ran from 1975 to 1984. 
Broad City's Abby Jacobson and Elian Gazer took to social media Wednesday to announce the start for season four of their hit Comedy Central series. The official Twitter account of Broad City, alongside with the video of Jacobson and Glazer confirming that season four will debut in August of 17. Of 2017 says, drum roll please, Broad City, S4 is coming at you summer 2017, hashtag BC4. Uh, it, the pair joked in the clip, we're coming in raw and hard in August, it's going to be seriously like so good. The August premiere date differs from the last three seasons of the show, which premiered during the winter season with season three beginning in February. The pair had Hillary Clinton appear on the show last season in the midst of her presidential campaign. Greg Berlanti is set to direct a remake of Little Shop of Horrors for Warner Brothers. The Hollywood Reporter says Matthew Robinson wrote the script for the latest version of the 1960s horror movie, which was adapted in 1982 as a Broadway musical and for four years later was turned into a big screen musical. Deadline.com confirmed the redo will also be a song and dance project. The Little Shop story focuses on a struggling floral shop worker whose life is changed by the discovery of a bloodthirsty plant. No casting or release date for the remake have been announced yet. Berlanti's credits include Dawson's Creek, Everwood, Political Animals, Supergirl, and Arrow. Reigning UFC lightweight champion Conor McGregor will star in Season 7 of Game of Thrones according to UFC President Dana White. White said recently during an interview on Fox Sports Live, I knew that a few months ago that they were interested in putting him in the show. He continued by saying, I'm glad he did it. It'll be great. The outspoken McGregor has yet to comment on the role or who he might be portraying. Notably, the fighter made a cameo appearance in the video game Call of Duty Infinite Warfare that starred Game of Thrones mainstay Kit Harrington. McGregor recently made headlines for obtaining a box Boxing license in California, which has further speculation that he wishes to challenge retired boxer Floyd Mayweather Jr. to a fight. Candace Cameron Burke will depart long-running ABC talk show The View. The four-year-old actress announced on Thursday's episode that she's leaving the series after less than two seasons as host to focus on other projects and her family. Burke explains, It's a little bittersweet for me today because I'm announcing that I'll be leaving The View. It wasn't an easy decision, but before I started The View, I had already had commitments to Fuller House and my work with the Hallmark Channel. Because of the success of those, my commitments have become even greater with those shows. She admitted, The commute of going West Coast to East Coast every single week for me has been been tough on me and hard for my family as well. I want to make sure that I'm able to spend as much time with my children and invest in all the projects that I do the fullest extent. Burr appeared as a guest host on the show several times before being named a permanent co-host in August 2015. Series creator Barbara Walters, Jenny McCarthy, and Rosie O'Donnell are among the many other stars who have come and gone over the past few years. Executive producer Candy Carter said it in a statement, On behalf of everyone at The View, it's been a pleasure working with Candace, a devoted mother, talented actress, and passionate co-host who never hesitated to speak her mind. Um, she also added, We are thrilled for her success with Fuller House and her Hallmark movies. She will always be a part of The View family, and we will gladly welcome her back to the show to support her with all of her endeavors. In Hollywood tradition, La La Land co-stars Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling took part in a hand and footprint ceremony at the TLC Chinese Theater in Los Angeles on Wednesday. Stone and Gosling placed their hands and feet into the same block of wet cement and signed their names, becoming the two newest stars to join the ranks of some of Hollywood's best-known actors and actresses who are immortalized in the theater's forecourt. Stone and Gosling start together in the musical comedy La La Land, which tells the story of a jazz pianist who falls for an aspiring actress. Gosling, who got to start on Disney's 90s reboot of the Mickey Mouse Club is known for his role in The Notebook, Drive, and Crazy Stupid Love. Stone is best known for her work in Zombieland, Crazy Stupid in Love, in which he also co-starred with Gosling, Spider-Man, and The Help. La La Land premieres in theaters on Friday. Jennifer Aniston and Olivia Munn, who starred in the holiday comedy Office Christmas Party, shared some laughs on the red carpet at the film's L.A. premiere. The film, which also stars Kate McKinnon, Jason Bateman, T.J. Miller, and Courtney B. Vance, follows the antics of a corporate office manager who throws an epic Christmas party to land a major client, played by Vance, despite warnings from the uptight CEO, played by Aniston. Aniston, who was dressed in a patchwork slip dress, shared a few laughs with Munn on Wednesday's red carpet. Katy Perry, Molly Sims, Jimmy Kimmel, and Fortune Feimeister also showed up for the premiere which was held at the Regency Village Theater. The film, directed by Blades of Glory directors Josh Gordon and Will Speck, hits theaters on Friday. 
Brad Pitt's request to have his divorce document sealed was reportedly denied. The 54-year-old actor has failed to convince a judge to seal custody documents in his ongoing divorce from Angelina Jolie, according to TMZ. Pitt was denied his request in court Wednesday after requesting the emergency hearing the day previous. His lawyer, Lance Spiegel, told E! News the actor will have another chance to make the documents private at a hearing in January. The Allied star and his camp reportedly moved to seal the documents after Jolie filed their con- uh, temporary custody of arrangement in court making it public. So it's told people that Pitt disagreed with the way Jolie has handled their split in the media. Entire says Angelina has consistently made public statements and public violence throughout this process. He has not. All he is saying and any therapist would agree here is that he wants to do what is best in the interest of his children and his entire family including her frankly and that is to keep this private. The source also added it is an inconceivable way why another would argue against this being private. What is the argument for having it public? Why would you want any details about this incredible difficult time to be broadcast to the whole world? Jolie filed for divorce from Pitt in September after two years of marriage and a decade together. The former couple shares six children, 15-year-old Maddox, 13-year-old Pax, 11-year-old Sahara, 10-year-old Shiloh, and 8-year-olds Vivian and Knox. Sofia Vergara's lawyer says the frozen embryo's lawsuit against the star would be, quote, an unnecessary legal battle. 44-year-old actress's attorney issued a statement in response to reports that Vergara is being sued by her own embryos in her ongoing legal battle with ex fiance Nick Lowe. Uh, the statement reads, next week the judge presiding over the case was to rule on Ms. Vergara's request for sanctions against Mr. Lowe for refusing to comply with the court order and on her motion for a summary judgment seeking dismissal of the case he filed against her, attempting to get control of the pre-embryos that he's created with Vergara. That genetic material was created pursuant to a written agreement that required both parties' written consent to attempt to create a pregnancy. Uh, the lawsuit also claims apparently Mr. Loeb and his counsel, knowing that he was about to lose, decided to attempt to save face by taking their proverbial ball and going home. Reports are out that Mr. Loeb has caused a lawsuit to be filed on behalf of the pre-embryos in Louisiana, essentially trying to get the same relief that he was trying to get through his failed legal attempts in California. It also added, if these reports are true, this latest maneuver is nothing more than another attempt on the part of Loeb to keep himself in the public eye by keeping himself linked to Ms. Vigara. The media reports contend that Mr. Loeb has caused a lawsuit to be initiated claiming that the pre-embryos, which are not embryos, but rather frozen fertilized ova, has been given names by him and have a right to live. Loeb apparently thinks that he will garner sympathy from the public and the courts through this latest maneuver. Page Six has reported Tuesday that a right to life lawsuit was filed against Vigar in Louisiana on behalf of her fertilized eggs. The suit claims the embryos listed as plaintiffs Emma and Isabella have been deprived of an inheritance from a trust created for them in Louisiana and request they be given to Loeb. The guy and Loeb split in 2014 after nearly two-year engagement. Loeb sued the actress the next year for custody of their fertilized eggs but filed a motion this week to drop that lawsuit in light of the new suit in Louisiana. Divorce attorney Martha Cohenstein told Page Six he's clearly worried that he's about to lose the California lawsuit. I think this lawsuit will be dismissed on its face because the embryos are not looking located in Louisiana. Russell Crowe will not be charged for physically confronting Azalea Banks following a heated altercation the two had during a hotel party. According to E! News, the Los Angeles District Attorney cleared the actor due to a lack of evidence and eyewitness accounts from fellow party attendees that claimed Banks was the main aggressor. The rapper had originally filed a report on Crowe and claimed on social media that he had attacked her and used racial slurs while throw, throwing her out of the party. According to TMZ, the DA has concluded that Crowe physically tossed her was justified to prevent the imminent violence threatened by Banks. Uh, Banks said in an interview in October, even if I were being erratic, you should have enough sense to have me escorted out properly and keep your hands and your spit to yourself. Rapper Rizza, who had brought Banks to the party, shared a different side of the story and refuted Banks' claims while taking Crow's sides. Rizza explained at the time, Azalea threatened to cut a girl in the face with a glass, then actually grab a glass and physically attacks for no logical reason. He also continued before denying that Crow had used racial slurs. Russell blocked the attack and expelled her from the suite, seeing its believing, and I saw her behave as an obnoxious, erratic individual, and in the circles I frequently this. I frequent this was unprecedented. I was totally puzzled by her and thought maybe meds or booze or something had zoned her out. Nevertheless, I made sure she got home safely.
Jenna Doohan Tatum says she and husband Channing Tatum share a primal sexual energy. The 36-year-old actress candidly discussed her happy and healthy sex life with Tatum, who's also 36 in the January issue of Cosmopolitan. Doohan Tatum said, I've always been a sexual person. We definitely have a, a very happy and healthy sex life. She explains something about being a dancer connects you to your physical body. It's primal, earthy, sexual energy by nature. You feel your body in a certain way. Channing is very much the same way. He's very in tune with that. Dewan and Tatum met on the set of 2006 romantic dance movie Step Up. I just told Cosmo she was initially hesitant to get involved with Tatum, who had recently ended another relationship. She recalled of their early romance. It was two nights of being weird. We hadn't even kissed. And then he went out partying with a bunch of dancers. Answers. Uh, she said his room was right above mine. He came down drunk with a sombrero on and banging on my door. He was like, I couldn't stop thinking about you. Let's do this. I just want to be with you. From that point forward, we were together. The Step Up co-stars married in Malibu, California in 2009 and welcomed their first child, daughter Everly, in 2013. Tatum told People in 2015 that he and Dewan are a good supporting team for each other. He said, none of this is easy, but at the same time, it's everything I would have ever wanted. Having a family and a little girl, it really makes things clear. The actor added, Jenna and I keep pushing each other to grow, be, and be better. I don't think I could do it in any other way than with her. Macy Williams' rep spoke out Wednesday after topless photos of the actress leaked online. The 19-year-old Game of Thrones star rep issued a statement to Page Six after an unknown person gained access to revealing pictures of Williams' personal Facebook account and posted them on Reddit. The spokesperson said the images online were shared from Macy's personal media account. The images are not explicit in nature, but pictures of Macy and close friends at a spa at a recent visit in Japan. Photos of Williams and her friends in varying states of undress appeared on Reddit and other websites over the weekend. The actress had recently traveled to Japan to advocate against marine shows. She said in an Instagram video Sunday, I want to say a massive, massive thank you to everyone who's been pushing on social media today. I'm overwhelmed by the amount of help and support that you guys are showing. She also added, by not buying a ticket to a dolphin show, by taking the pledge, you can put an end to the captive industry. As a consumer, you have so much power, so much power, by, and by taking the pledge, you're standing with us on this awful, awful topic. Dustin Bieber, Leslie Jones, and Gabrielle Union are among the other stars who have had revealing photos leaked online in the past year. Model Emily Ratajkowski made headlines last week after a photographer published nude photos of her without permission. Ratajkowski tweeted in response, This book and the images within them are a violation. These photos being used without my permission is an example of exactly the opposite of what I stand for. Women choosing when and how they want to share their sexuality and bodies. Williams is best known for playing Arya Stark on the HBO series Game of Thrones. The drama will return for an abbreviated seventh season in the summer. Jimmy Fallon got his game on on Wednesday on The Tonight Show as he was able to try out Nintendo's new Super Mario Run title and upcoming console, The Switch. Presented to the late-night host by Nintendo of America President Reggie Phils Amin, Fallon played through a level of the mobile-based Super Mario Run before it hits iOS devices starting December 15th. Legendary video game designer and producer Shigeru Miyamoto is credited with creating Mario, was also in attendance and gave Fallon a thumbs-up on his Super Mario Run performance after the comedian was able to obtain a superstar. Afterwards, found that was then surprised with the chance to try out the company's newest hybrid console, the Switch, along with its highly anticipated premiere title, The Legend of Zelda Breathe on the Wild. Fallon yelled after the Switch was revealed, I'm geeking out right now. Fallon was shown the vast open world of, Hul of Hyrule of Zelda and how the Switch can be easily be played on the television or on the go. He says, I love this. Every kid, every human, every person will be playing with this. Also on The Tonight Show, Fallon's band, The Roots, played the classic theme song to Superman brothers along with Miyamoto who is on guitar. Kim Kardashian and Kanye West's marriage is doing just fine says close friend Jonathan Chibin. The 42 year old entrepreneur dismissed reports that Kardashian and West are headed for a split in an interview with E! News at the DailyMail.com holiday party Wednesday. Chebin said, I just FaceTime with Kim and Kanye and everyone's talking about some divorce rumors. I was laughing because I didn't hear that all day and I guess everybody else apparently here does. It's so funny to me because it's not so true. He added, I don't know where people come up with, with stories, but it's literally funny. Jennifer Aniston has also been pregnant like a thousand times, so it's kind of a joke. The star said, they're in good spirits. I don't want to talk much about them just because it's not my business, but I did have to say that the divorce was kind of uh, hysterical. 
Uh, when I heard that, I literally burst out laughing. There's no divorce. Us Weekly had reported earlier in the day that Kardashian wants a divorce from Wes. Sources said the 36-year-old reality star is trying to build a case for full custody of the couple's two children before she files to end the marriage. Insider said it will take some time before she can do anything, but she doesn't want to stay married. Kardashian and Wes married in 2014 and share a three-year-old daughter, North, and one-year-old son, Wes. Uh, uh, excuse me, North and one-year-old son, Saint. Rally Star has kept out of the spotlight since being robbed at gunpoint on October 2nd in Paris while Wes was released from the hospital November 30th after more than a week of stay for exhaustion. Pop star Megan Trainor canceled her remaining 2016 concert Thursday due to a lingering illness. The 22-year-old singer announced in an Instagram post that she's been placed on a strict vocal rest and won't perform again until 2017. Trainor wrote, I posted last week that I wasn't feeling great but was powering through the best that I could. Unfortunately, I'm not feeling any better and after leaving the doctors today, I have been on, put on a strict vocal rest for the next two weeks. Uh, she also added, this absolutely kills me because I was so excited to see all of you on the road. I'm going to go home and rest so I can get back to see you all as soon as I can. I love you so much and I am so appreciative of your love and support that you constantly show me. You mean everything to me. Can't wait to see you in 2017. Trainer was to perform at the 2016 Billboard Women's in Music Awards and Ceremony on Friday at a number on, of uh, iHeartRadio Jingle Ball events around the country, according to Billboard. The star was previously forced to cancel shows in 2015 after having a vocal hemorrhage. Mick Jagger is a dad again at the age of 73. The Rolling Stones frontman welcomed his son with 29-year-old girlfriend uh, Melanie Hamrick in New York. His publicist confirmed Thursday to the BBC. The baby boy is Jagger's eighth child and was born more than two years after the birth of his great-granddaughter, Ariza. Jagger's publicist says the star and Hamrick are both delighted with their son. Uh, the spokesperson added, Mick was at the hospital for the arrival. Mother and baby are doing well, and we respect that the media respects their privacy at this time. Jagger is also dad to Karis, 46, with Marsha Hunt, Jade, 45, with ex-wife Bianca J Jagger, Elizabeth, 32, James, 31, Georgia May, 24, and Gabriel, 18, with Jerry Hall, and Lucas, 17, with Luciana Guimez. Him and Hammock started dating in 2014 following the suicide of his longtime partner, Loren Scott. Uh, source told the son after word broke in June of Hamrick's pregnancy, they are surprised and happy. This is great news. It will be Mick's ape child, and nothing phases him. He's been incredibly supportive. The insider added, Mel Melanie ha knows what a great relationship Mick has with all his children and can't wait for him to be a dad again. They are taking the news in their stride. Jagger's bandmate, Ronnie Wood, also became a father again in June. The musician welcomed two twin baby girls, Gracie Ann and Alice Rose, with wife Sally Humphreys, making him a dad of six. Passing to report, Greg Lake, the frontman of the band King Crimson and Emerson Lake and Palmer, has died at the age of 69. Lake's Manager Stuart Young noted on the Rockers' official Facebook page Thursday announcing his death. Yesterday, December 7th, I lost my best friend to a long and summer battle with cancer. Um, he also continued, Greg Lake will stay in my heart forever, as he always has been. His family will be grateful for privacy during this time of their grief. Considered a pioneer of progressive rock, Lake is best known for songs in the court of the Crimson King, 21st century schizoid man, and the Christmas classic, I believe in Father Christmas. Lake's death comes months after his bandmate and keyboardist Keith Emerson died in March. Authorities announced that Emerson had died from a self-inflected gunshot wound to the head. Madonna took James Corden's Late Late Show segment, Carpool Karaoke, to the next level Wednesday with flashy dance moves and revealing tidbits about her career. Uh, Madonna said as the pair got to drive around New York City while jamming out to a number of the pop icons hit songs from the 80s and 90s I don't like riding in a car unless there's music uh, and he also uh, including uh, other songs excuse me uh, perform include Papa Don't Preach Don't Cry From Argentina Express Yourself Ray of Light Music and Vote that saw Madonna break out an impressive leg split while sitting in the passenger seat a big personality in music and on stage, Corden learned from the 58-year-old that she actually considers herself quite normal and boring when she is at home. Madonna said to much of Corden's surprise, my work is rebellious, but my lifestyle is not rebellious. I don't smoke, I don't drink, I don't party, I'm quite square. I go home and I'm Julie Andrews. Now, another revealing moment came after Madonna admitted to kissing Michael Jackson after Corden asked about their friendship. 
Uh, she said about tongue kissing the late superstar, baby, I've been around. According to Madonna, she had to lean in for the kiss. She continued about making the first move. I did it if you want to know the truth because he's a little bit shy. However, he was a willing uh, accomplice. I did get him to sort of loosen up with a glass of Chardonnay and it did wonders.